Hey guys, Mike here, and today I'm introducing a new series called How to Make an App. For this series, we'll be using Unity 3D, a free, easy use tool that ensures the quick development of apps. In this episode, we'll be focusing on setting everything up. Let's get started. Alright, first let's open Unity. And we'll create a new project. You can call it whatever you like. You call mine YouTube and set the destination. I just leave it to documents, it's a good area. This is important that you set this to 2D because our app's gonna be 2D rather than a 3D game. Then you wanna set create project. Once open, you'll see a layout that looks a bit like this. If it doesn't look like this, just go Window, Layouts and Default, and it'll reset. You can move everything around if you want, just to make more area for the scene view, which is our main area that we'll be focusing on. We also want to drag the game window over to the right, like so. This way it looks like a phone. It's kind of like a portrait 1 by 3 ratio. Now right click here, UI and canvas. Double click on canvas. This area you see here is going to be what's seen on the game view. Make sure you do scale the screen size in the inspector. Now right click canvas, go UI and go image. As you can see whatever's in the canvas shows up on the, ca on the game view. Drag this up And then use this tool here to drag it along until it turns orange on both sides. This locks it to make sure there's no spacing between here, which looks a lot cleaner. Now, we've got a top bar up here where we'll put our title in later on. But as you can see, if you resize your screen, say if someone has a different screen resolution, that top bar's not going to stay there. In order to change this, we need to change the anchor. So click on the image and go anchor, which is this little box here. Since it's at the top, you want to click the top box. But if you do it now, it'll stay to the top, but it still has some slight issues. So we want to change it to stretch top. Now it'll stay to the very top and stretch all the way. Okay, let's add some text. Right click image, go UI, text. Put it inside there as a parent if, it's, if you did it this way. This way you can lock it onto the parent object. Click best fit and change your text. We're going to set it to YouTube. Now that looks a bit weird so we're going to center it on both the X and Y axis. We're also going to change the color. We'll make it a... We'll make it a blue. This color here is actually the skybox of the camera. As you can see. You want to click here and go solid color. Now we can change the background color of the actual app. I'm going to set to a nice dark color as our app's going to be a dark theme with a top white banner. Cool. Okay, now as you can see the font isn't really great. So we're going to import our own. If I can find it that is. 
All right, here we go. You can use any font for this, but I'm going to use Oswald as it's free. And we're going to go... We'll go to light. So I'm just going to drag it in and put it in the project window. We're also going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it UI, where we'll still store all the UI objects like fonts. You can also import this by right clicking and doing import new asset and then finding it that way. All right, let's add it to the text. So if we go over, click on the text object and then find font. Pick the little circle and then click Oswald or whatever your font's called. Now you can see it looks a lot better. I think I'm gonna change the background color though because I think a lighter theme might be a bit better. And I'm also going to change the height of the top banner. You can set it here. We're going to set it to about 125. Then we're going to drag it to the top. Boom. As you can see, the text stays with the top banner. This is because we made it a child object of our top bar. Oh, got caps lock on. Okay, make sure that's centered. Cool. Now we're going to add some buttons. UI button. It's a bit small, so we'll just resize it. There we go. Now, if you click the arrow on the button, you see the text. You can also change the text of the button. We'll call this one click me. Then we'll change the font. And click best fit. Awesome. Now you can see this little black border around the actual button. I don't like this so I'm just going to click the button object then go image and for source image I'm going to do none. There we go. It will change the color. There we go. All right, now let's make the button do something. As you can see down here, it has an event. If we click the plus to add something to the list, these little buttons pop up here. Let's make the button do something. We'll create a image. We'll put it in the very center, which is where that anchor symbol is. And then we'll change the color to red, just for an example. Now click the button. Hold and drag the image game object into this area or click the circle and find it. And then click this drop down here and select game object. We're going to make this button, make this red box disappear when it's clicked. So we're going to do game object dot set active false. If this is ticked, it equals true. So the, it'll be visible. If it's false, it'll disappear. Let's see if it works. Click the play button. Then if we click the button, it disappears. If you click it again, it won't actually work. We need a script to do that. Okay. Let's get rid of that image. And we'll create a new script. We'll call it UI Canva. This will be a C sharp script. Yours may open with a different software. I just use Notepad Plus Plus because it's more lightweight. But uh, yours should do the same thing. We're gonna do 
up here you want to highlight that and press ctrl d this will duplicate it now press enter on it to drop it down and then add ui to the end of that to import all of unity's ui features now we can get rid of this and we're going to create a new void we're going to call it public void button event okay so if we attach the script to the main camera and then we click the button and in the event we can drag the main camera and then scroll down to UI handler and we can see our event should be in here that's an event, there it is. So every time we click this, it'll cause this event to start. So, for an example, we're gonna do debug.log. Hello world. Control S to save. And then we'll play it. Click. And there we go, hello world at the bottom left corner of the screen. Just because it goes to the console when it's a debug. But we wanted to do a little bit more than that, so we're gonna once again add an image, center it, make it green. And then in here we're gonna have to tell the script what it is. So we need a public game object image and then in the button event area we want to do image dot set active false so every time we click that button image is going to disappear control is to save main camera and drag the raw image that we created into the script Let's test it out. So click it, and boom, it's gone. That's all says hello world. Let's just get rid of that. Now we want the image to reappear when we click the button. If it's already false. Okay, so we're gonna go if image.active true, then it's gonna be false. Else if the image is not active, then image dot set active true. Cool. Let's test that one. Sorry, just waiting for the loading thing in the bottom right. You have to wait for that before pressing play. Okay, play. Click the button. It disappears. Click it again. It appears. That's cool. Alright, thanks for watching guys. This is just the basic setup guide. Showing you the basics of Unity. And um... Yeah, in the next episode I guess... We can make it a bit more in depth. We have like a little nav bar that slides out. 